Welcome to a new episode of Trigger Weekend Masterclass. And in this episode, I am going to show you how you can create your own chat GPT, your own custom chat GPT. First of all, I'm going to show you how it works in the application. And after that, I'm going to show you how it works in the designer. I've already uploaded files to our custom chat GPT in a different episode. And now I'm going to use that upload to look for, for instance, a specific piece of text, or, well, in this case, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to give me the first two lines of the, of the file itself. First of all, um, I have to enter the model that it needs to use, and I have to add the assistant that it needs to use, um, and I have to select the files that ChatGPT needs to uh, search. Um, and in this case, I am going to select this specific file. And what happens after that is that, well, ChatGPT is like a chat, uh, as the word says. Um, so what it does is you create a thread and that thread has messages and you can enter a message, but ChatGPT can also enter a message. So it's like a small chat. Um, so what we first do in this case is first of all we are going to link every file to that specific assistant so that we can search it then we are going to create a thread then we are going to create a message then we have to run the message after that we can retrieve all the messages within that thread so we can show you the response of ChatGPT itself so I'm going to check this file then I'm going to ask ChatGPT to give me the first and second line in a specific file. I'm going to create that message, which is created right now. I'm going to run it. And then I have to retrieve the message. And, and now you can see that the result consists of two records. First of all, the question that I asked ChatGPT, can you give me the first and second line in the file? And after that, the response of ChatGPT, which is the first and second lines in the file are learn how Trigger Plus AI accelerate your business growth and turn manual tasks into a digital tool. So what does it look like in the designer? I'm going to show you the user flow first, and then I'm going to show you all the different flow parts because in this case, I've divided the entire process in different flow parts to make it a little bit more easy for you to understand what's happening. So we go to the user flow, go to the OpenAI check that I've created. And what you see here is, this was the page where I entered all the information that I needed. Then I click check the file. We link the file to the correct assistant. And then we create a thread, we create a message, after that, we run the message, and in the end, we uh, retrieve the message that OpenAI generated as well. The thing is, because it's a chat, and if you've used ChatGPT before, it sometimes needs to think before it can respond. So that's why we have a button which says, check for new messages. As soon as you click it, you retrieve the new messages again to see if there's a new response. So, we're going to check all these flow parts to show you how this actually works. So like I said, we started off by linking the file to an assistant. And what we have here is we need the assistant ID. We need the files that we would like to link to the assistant and we need a token. And a token is for authorization. What we do here is we go to OpenAI, we post, Etc. Etc. And in the end, what's important is that we send the file IDs to ChatGPT. This is, by the way, an important header that you need to add: the OpenAI data. If you don't add this, the interface won't work. It's also in the documentation of ChatGPT, but sometimes it's easier if somebody tells you. ChatGPT will respond with an ID. In this case. We don't have to do anything with that. 
but it can be helpful to find out what happens when you send out a message you know, to retrieve other information. Um, and we save that assistant ID with the file so we know which file is linked to which assistant. So after we've linked the file to the assistant, we create a thread. So we go to the flow part to create a thread. Same thing, works in a similar way. However, in this case, you do not send any data at all. So it's empty. Still keep in mind that you need to add the header. And in this case, we get an ID back from ChatGPT. And we do need to store this ID because we're going to use it further along the way when we create messages and retrieve messages. So this is an important one to remember. After creating the thread, we create a message. Works in a similar way. So as you can see here, we add the thread ID in the URL. So ChatGPT knows that we're creating a message for this specific thread. Well, we tell ChatGPT which files to look into, the content. So that was the question that we were asking, like, hey, can you give me the first two lines? Um, and in this case, we add the role, which is user. ChatGPT has several kinds of roles. You can add them or you can define one yourself. In this case, we define it as you. And in this case, of course, we get an ID back as well. Can be helpful to do some error handling. So once we created the message itself, we need to run the message. So um, what you can do within ChatGPT, technically you can add several messages in a row, and then you can say like, okay, execute this. So you have to run the message after that. And of course, over here, you have the thread ID again, uh, just like with creating the messages. And in this case, you have to run it. And what is important in this case, when running the messages, is that you tell ChatGPT which assistant to use. So that's something that you determine at the end. So you created the package, the thread and the messages, and then you say, okay, create it or run it within this assistant. And after that, of course, you get an ID back, etc., cetera, et cetera. The final step is to show or to retrieve all the messages that have been created. Well, this one is a little bit more tricky because what do you need to do? You get the list of all the messages. Of course, you need the thread ID again. And in this case, you use the get function instead of the post function because we're only retrieving information and not saving anything at OpenAI. And OpenAI sends back a whole lot of information, but in this case, we only use this part. So the value part, because those are the messages Excel. We also use the created at because ChatGPT adds a number, which is the when it created the message. So the last one that it has created is the response of ChatGPT itself. Okay. And as soon as we've done that, we have to go through every message, store that message into our data model. And in the end, we show them as an output to the page itself. Did you like the video? Hit the subscribe button and also hit the like button, of course.